pray three times like this. And he touched the floor three times. So outside of these temples, they usually have uh, these birds in wooden cages. And therefore, um, I don't know, releasing. And once you release it, apparently you get good luck. This last guy doesn't look too healthy. So this ritual is very bad for the ecosystem and wildlife. And I probably shouldn't have done it. But I did it for the, the video, I guess. And uh, this is what probably happens to them. They can't really survive out here. This is my hot take. I actually think Laos pho is better than Vietnamese pho. It's just more flavor. Hey, yo, mic check one, two with your boy John. What's going on? We're in uh, Vientiane, Laos right now, and I'm about to take you to one of the biggest temples in uh, Vientiane. So uh, stay tuned. So travel tip of the day, if you want to save some money on like taxis and stuff, download the app called Loka and yeah, go we'll save some money. You my Loka? Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Helmet? Nah, I don't need a helmet. In Laos, we don't use helmets, right? Yeah. You talk? Yeah. Oh. You ready? What's your name? Uh, Mac. Mac? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Canada. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, so we finally made it to the temple. And here it is. So this is the entrance. And I think there's an admission fee. It shouldn't be that too expensive, but let's see, let's see. Let's check out the price. Ooh. Hello. How much is the ticket? 30,000? God damn. So foreigners 30, Lao people is 5,000. I'm Kun Lao. I'm Kun Lao, please. Come on. Whoa. Check how cool these Naga uh, sculptures are. See, sometimes they offer the Naga some flowers. And yeah, sometimes it's rice. Check this tongue out. It's made out of metal. I've never seen that before. It's very cool. Look at the detail on it. You see all the scales and everything? What's that? Okay, so this part is like wax. I guess sometimes they offer um, some candles to the Nagas and they just let it burn and sit. All right, let's check out the worship area. Do not burn incense on the altar okay so this is where they worship buddha i guess and you can make offerings of flowers candles incense i guess they don't want you to burn incense candles on altar because it makes it messy and damages the table because if you can see on the floor it's, it's kind of damaged i'm going to demonstrate how to do this when you sit down in front of the Buddha, you have to sit like this because you don't want to point your bottom of the feet to Buddha because that's considered um, the most dirtiest part of the body. So that's why you always sit like this. Never point your feet at Buddha. And when you pray to Buddha, you pray three times like this. And you touch the floor three times. And you usually um, ask for something like a wish. People usually wish for good health, good fortune, and good luck. Check this out. This is what the temple actually looked like before or maybe after it got looted. See it says here, the situation of that long after the thieves destroyed and got the valuables away in 1875 and remember how I told you they had like a golden 
part of the temple which was made out of pure gold it was probably right here that's why it looks a little different in the painting they probably stole that part it probably used to look something like this maybe that whole bit was all pure gold but now I think just the tip of it is just gold so yeah the house back in the day was robbed a lot and looted during the war and if you ever been to like um, Luang Prabang they actually got a famous Buddha statue stolen from there apparently or that's how the story is if you go to Bangkok there's this famous temple called uh, Wat Prakeo and it's a uh, it's a Buddha statue that's made out of like I think jade or emerald and that was apparently stolen from Laos from Luang Prabang when it was raided by I guess Thai Thai people <clears throat> yeah that's how it goes sometimes so over here we got a whole bunch of uh, Buddha statues and they all look different they're all different sizes colors some's got nipples yeah all different positions yeah very cool and I heard they actually have um, the breastbone of Buddha actually in that room somewhere enshrined in here so outside of these temples they usually have uh, these birds in wooden cages and therefore um, I don't know releasing and once you release it apparently you get good luck how much is one today? I see 50,000 that is about uh, two, like three dollars. I see one that's already dead. Need, oh my god. There's a dead bird in there already. He didn't make it. Look at him. I need to die now. And my poor birds. Hasip. Yeah. Hasip, you say? This is the hasip, the four cheaper birds. ones. Four birds in here? Mm, this one's got 20 birds. Okay. okay, okay. I'll try to free these birds, these poor little birds. The whole cage is made out of, I think, bamboo. And yeah, the lady told me I have to say my name and I guess make a wish or something but yeah let's try to free these birds they have like these two sticks right here and you just pull them up I guess and they can get free there you go this is the doorway guys go ahead oh damn go ahead buddy there you go this last guy doesn't look too healthy He's just standing there. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Let me try to break the cage a little bit more so we can get out. Come on. It's all right. He doesn't want to leave. Come on, bud. Let's go, buddy. And you kind of sort of got to push him out oh god there you go I think these are all my birds they don't really fly I don't know if they're really weak or what but they don't really fly that good so maybe it wasn't a really good idea to support this ritual because it's not good for the wildlife but yeah, these birds will probably end up dying really soon. Oh god, I just saw one bird just fall in one of these holes that leads to the sewer. And they're probably not going to make it out. So this ritual is very bad for the ecosystem and wildlife. And I probably shouldn't have done it. But I did it for the the video I guess and uh, 
This is what probably happens to them. They can't really survive out here. Because they're so weak and, I guess, not nourished. So, don't do like I did and uh, buy one of these, what do you call these? Life releases? It's supposed to be for good luck, but I don't know. We got some sweet drinks. Pilau. Nam yeah. Nam. Oh, some milk. Me overteen my. Me. I'll try overteen. I never tried overteen in a long time. I'm not really sure what it even is. Yeah, here we go. So it's got some condensed milk. Is that sugar? Nam pen. Ani pen. Nam da. Pen kim tiem. I'm not sure what that is. Ah, oh, so it's powdered milk. It's powdered milk. They don't got the fresh milk here. And then, and that's the oven tea. So it's kind of like a coffee drink, I guess. Alright, here we go. Like I said, they put the drink in a bag and then another paper bag and then another plastic bag. So it's not that great for the environment. But it is what it is. Welcome to Southeast Asia. Here we go. It's not bad actually, it's pretty good. It tastes like something similar to a sweet hot chocolate, but it's cold. much ice is in there. So it costs around a dollar. 20,000 kg. So this is the reclining Buddha. And he is pretty huge. If you guys don't know the story about the, the sleeping Buddha, this is actually represents Buddha's final days in the physical form. Because uh, he reaches enlightenment and after he dies he goes to nirvana and yeah this is when he breaks the cycle of uh, life death and rebirth like i said usually the bottom part of um the feet is considered the dirtiest part of the human so you never want to point your feet at um buddha because it's a sign of disrespect and in, I guess, Lao, maybe Thai culture, you can actually call people bottom of the feet to curse people out. They say son tin, which means bottom of the feet. And it's a bad word in this culture. But anyways, enough cursing at the temple. So just on the outside of the temple of Tat Luang, they also have a, like a little market area. Check it out. So they sell like traditional clothing, some jewelry, a lot of stuff I don't need, but I'm, what I'm looking for is uh, some food. And yeah, let's go try to look for some food. All right, so I ordered uh, some, I think it's pork pho, Lao's pho. And got some lettuce, some veggies and stuff. And these are the condiments. And yeah, we're about to go crazy on this. I didn't even wash my hands after handling the birds, but whatever. If I get sick, I get sick, right? Let's try this out. It's not bad, it's a little salty. But yeah. Looks good enough. But right here, right outside the temple, the food is kind of expensive. I'm actually paying probably double the price. I paid 30,000 deep for a bowl. You can usually get a, a bowl of fur for like 15 to 20. But yeah, it's a tourist price. <laughs> not but it's not bad. Let's make this a little spicy. Let's add some chilies. 
some sugar and chili sauce all right here we go sometimes if you don't know what you're doing when seasoning your pho you can actually make it worse and I think I made it worse this time but yeah this is Lao's pho this is my hot take I actually think Lao's pho is better than Vietnamese pho it's just more flavor in Vietnam they actually like to eat pho like clean they don't like to season it a lot and keep it like I don't know pure I guess in Lao we put everything in there so much uh, condiments you saw all the spices all the sauces they like to soup up their pho a lot just like in Canada mm. that's my hot take Laos pho is better than Vietnamese pho.